in this uh, session i am going to uh, look at uh, the principles for sound management of operations uh, risk this is uh, an article that is uh, suggested uh, by basel and uh, it uh, we, we will be uh, looking at uh, aspects like uh, what are the three layers that uh, the basel model has identified for strong operational risk governance that's one aspect uh, which we'll uh, look at and along with that we would also focus on the areas like responsibilities of uh, board of directors as well as the senior management to implement a strong risk culture in the organization and uh, we look at uh, the principles that are underlying good uh, operational risk uh, measurement and management uh, and even a framework for a good operational uh, risk management which are highlighted by basel we would look at some key common tools which companies can use to implement better risk management practices uh, in their organization and uh, we also uh, look at uh, how the companies can actually get into ma managing technology risk as well as outsourcing risk what are some of the suggestions which are given by the basel uh, committee in terms of handling these kind of risks so this is what uh, is typically uh, taken care of in this uh, session so just to get uh, started to ensure a good operational risk governance basel has suggested three key lines of defense means these are the three layers if implemented effectively it ensures a proper operational risk management in the organization so it starts with having a good business line management means the core business line the core uh, operations activities of the company they are responsible the people who are a part of uh, the line businesses they are responsible primarily for identifying and managing the risk people let's say we are uh, talking about a retail bank people who are involved in day to day operations of the bank they form a part of the business line management they are responsible for identifying and the managing the risks inherent in the products activities processes and systems so the every business line is accountable for various products they perform regular day to day activities they implement a few processes and uh, systems so if the business line management is strong enough at this layer itself the operational risk can be controlled to a large extent so the for the for the proper implementation of the framework it is uh, suggested that the business line management should be strong enough so they are responsible for identifying and managing the risk inherent in the products activities processes and systems then we are talking about a next layer of defense being called as corporate operational risk function so this is uh, uh, this is uh, an independent operation risk uh, uh, department or uh, a function that is present in the organization which is uh, slightly uh secluded or isolated from the normal regular day to day operations of the bank so the prime prime uh, function of that uh, particular department is to assess measure monitor the operational risk activities so it will take care of the business line management or it oversees the business line management as far as the operational risk activities are concerned then the third important line is independent review get get the processes activities audited by an independent uh, team 
and challenge the bank's operational risk management controls, processes, and systems. So, whosoever are the reviewers or the auditors, they should be competent enough, they should be appropriately trained, and the most important thing, they should not be involved in the development, implementation, or operation of the framework. They are more or less independent kind of parties. Either you can get it done by internal to your organization or external to your organization, but they should be very good at identifying the weaknesses and exposing them. That will help in proper implementation of a risk management framework in the organization. Now, when I'm talking about uh, the CORF, Corporate Operational Risk Function. It's a separate uh, function which, uh, which uh, every organization, especially the banks and the financial organizations need to go with. So, the way it is implemented, it's a, it is uh, different uh, in small banks versus large. In a small bank, uh, we can create an isolated operational risk function very simply like separate the duties you separate the duties and the independent review of the processes and function that is what small banks typically uh, uh, do as a part of its corporate operational risk function because it has to be independent with the regular activities of the bank so just by segregating the roles and responsibilities as well as the independent review this part can be achieved Whereas, when we talk about the large banks, we create an independent reporting structure. Even uh, the top level uh, management, senior management, the regular operations lines reporting is something different and probably risk line reporting is something different. So, the hierarchy of reporting you segregate it all together. And this risk line is primarily responsible for completely, they focus only on the design, maintenance and development of the risk framework because for large banks, this has to be done on a day-to-day -day basis. So they are responsible for de uh, designing, maintenance and ongoing development of the operational risk framework. So it's a complete full-time job. It's not a small segregation of the duties or something. It is a continuous uh, process. So, it, it is uh, a full-time uh, job in terms of uh, a separate reporting structure altogether. And uh, this team will be responsible for measuring the operations risk through various uh, metrics. They get into the reporting processes. They have risk committees and uh, uh, all these things and their main main thing is to challenge the business lines whatever the inputs that are going to the business lines or whatever the inputs that are coming from the business lines to the risk systems of the company all those things have to be crucially verified and critically reviewed that is what is the key role of CORF. Any input that is coming from the business lines into the risk management uh, framework and system or any, any output that is uh, taken from the risk management framework and systems uh, by the business line has to be thoroughly verified because uh, any wrong input or wrong output could result in a lot of uh, financial damage occurring uh, to the process as well as to the organization as a whole. So that is what is the responsibility of operational risk function, which is like a separate department for operations uh, risk, whose job is right from establishing the processes, designing, maintenance, development and uh, monitoring of the risk uh, operations risk uh, framework and implementation across the organization then when we talk about the operational risk management a few, few key fundamental principles that are identified by basel which also include 
some of the responsibilities of the key people of the organization right from the board of directors to the senior management uh, to the various teams it says that board of directors should take key lead and they should build a strong risk management culture in the organization right uh, it should not be uh, driven by profits and uh, uh, incentives based on profit but it should be a risk management driven incentives the the entire organization should go with a strong risk management culture and uh, the bank should develop implement and maintain a risk management framework which has to be integrated into the overall risk management framework operations risk management framework should be integratable into the complete risk management framework of the company which is quite evident whatever the framework whatever the formula whatever the mechanism that is being designed to implement operations risk should be compatible with the overall risk management process of the company and whatever is the framework that the bank has established it should be established approved and reviewed by the board of directors and the board of directors also should review the risk appetite statement of the bank what is this risk appetite statement what are the types of risks to how much extent we can bear the risk right what are the various layers of operations risk that the bank is going to bear the tolerance statement what are the tolerance levels of less all these things whichever are established by the bank this particular board of directors have to critically review it and revisit the numbers and suggest for modifications sir, to whatever extent possible now when it comes to the senior management they are responsible for developing a clear effective and a robust governance structure which will uh, define the trans uh, the responsibilities of each and every individual where they are transparent and consistent with the overall uh, business of the organization and the senior management is also responsible for identifying operations risk in all products activities processes system this four are very common uh, uh, outputs for every uh, company the products which are getting developed the activities day to day monthly whatever are the activities that the company is doing the processes they are adhering to and the systems that got developed or in all of them they are some level of operational risks involved now the senior management is responsible to ensure that they are able to identify assess the exposure of the bank or of the company to each of these scenarios and they come out with implementation mechanisms for addressing these risks then we are also saying that the senior management must make sure that any new product activity process systems anything new that is being implemented it is completely assessed for operation risk they are responsible to make sure that any new product that is being introduced the operational risk of that product is well taken care of any new system that is being uh, implemented make sure that that system is uh, properly tested for operation risk and the regular monitoring practice or even a develop a process on how to monitor the operations risk on a regular basis how to compute the exposure to these operations losses on a continuous basis the process for the same needs to be developed by the senior management and coming to the implementation department 
there should be a strong control environment the control environment in the bank should be so strong every policy that is being written every process that is developed for uh, all these inputs are used and a proper review mechanism happens within the organization that is a strong control internal control the monitoring the uh, the reviews all the, the the defect locking all these things are typically uh, taken care of by the company in a in a in a very stringent manner the internal controls are very strong and wherever required the bank is implementing the required risk mitigation and risk transfer strategies probably risk transfer strategies could be like usage of insurance or some kind of credit default swaps or some other uh, kind of uh, products where the transfer of risk hedging activities where the transfer of risk uh, goes to the other counterparty and wherever uh, required the risk mitigation mechanisms are also taken care of sufficiently and the bank should ensure that the business continuity plan is in place business resiliency plan is in place so that anything that any unfortunate risk that is uh, going to occur the bank will have the ability to continue its operations even a big severe business disruption can occurs the losses will not be that intense and the activity the business activity is going to continue smoothly the bank should make sure that such kind of process is in place and of course uh, the disclosures so because uh, the bank uh, in in a way is impacting various stakeholders the decisions of the bank impact the shareholders the lenders and various other stakeholders for the bank so whatever the disclosures that are uh, done by the bank they should allow the stakeholders to assess the approach of the bank towards operations risk management so whatever the activities the bank has taken with respect to operations risk management they have to be clearly communicated uh, to the all the concerned stakeholders through through proper disclosures to them so all these are uh, treated as some of the most important uh, principles governing good operational risk management within an organization so coming to the framework it is said that identify the governance structures used to manage operations risk so what are the reporting lines who is accountable for what so identify all these things within an organization what tools for risk assessment we are going to use i'll identify i'll talk about a few tools in the next slide what are the various risk assessment tools that can be uh, used and that uh, the organization has uh, decided in moving forward and uh, what is the operational risk appetite of the bank what are the tolerance limits to what extent the bank is going to take operational risk so what are the various measurements we are using for the same and uh, what are the acceptable or tolerable limits of operation risk uh, for the bank and uh, how much of inherent risk is already there in the product and how much of excess residual risk the bank is uh, willing to take and all these things properly approved in terms of uh, strategies taken for risk mitigation and the uh, tools or instruments that are used for risk transfer all these things have to be completely identified as a part of uh, operation risk management framework even the thresholds who is going to approve these thresholds and limits who is going to monitor them what is the monitoring frequency of these uh, thresholds and limits all these things have to be established as a part of the bank's risk management framework and uh, on a regular basis how is this risk uh, part reported 
what are the various uh, uh, MIS reports that are uh, generated uh, in this uh, context. All this thing has to be established as a part of the framework document. And at least the common terms and conditions and terminologies that are typically being used as a part of Operation Res. So that everyone in the organization identifies the key terms uh, or the key processes associated with uh, risk identification. What are the various things that go as a part of risk identification? What tools can be used for risk identification? Same is the way with uh, the exposure rating and risk uh, mitigation, risk management, risk monitoring, all these various activities of risk management. Then provide a procedure for independent review. How do we, uh, on, at what frequency is the independent review performed? And uh, who are all involved as a part of uh, independent review? What are the various uh, artifacts that would be covered as a part of uh, the independent uh, review assessment? All these things also will be handled as a part of the framework. And uh, the policies, what policies need to be reviewed? Any change in the operations risk profile of the bank occurs. What policy, the reviewal of the policies and the revision of the policies have to happen if the framework has to be more and more appropriate. Then, talking about uh, a few tools that uh, can really be used to identify and assess the operations risk, it can start right from audit findings. The audit findings actually provide a very good insight into the inherent risk. Whatever, whether it is internal or external risk factors, the audit uh, findings can help in assessing the operation risk quite comfortably. Then we are talking about internal and external loss data collection as well as analysis. Internal loss data is whatever uh, are the uh, records that are available within the organization with respect to the previous uh, losses that have occurred because of failed operations are similarly uh, from the external world also. So whenever we talk about the internal loss data, probably because of some fraud or some systems down, some kind of losses that have occurred in the past, all those need to be captured and evaluated. That helps us in understanding how effective are the internal controls of the organization, what are the key causes for the one of the some of the largest losses that have occurred, and whatever the failures that are occurring, control failures, you are not able to identify the loss in before, uh, is what is uh, a control failure. Is it a repeated regular uh, process or? Uh, that particular loss is a one-time kind of a loss. So whatever the control failure that has occurred, is it more of a repeated activity or is it more of a one-time kind of an activity? Similarly, we can look at from the external data, the complete operational loss amounts, the dates, recoveries, all this uh, that... Uh, that are occurring at entities outside the scope of the bank so that the comparison with the internals can be done to assess whether uh, our controls, see basically it's like a benchmarks. When I look at some external banks and external entities, get these numbers from these external entities, it helps me to compare my internal numbers with those external numbers so that proper uh, assessment of whether how good are my controls, how good are my processes can be done quite comfortably. Then we are talking about uh, the framework relating to the risk self-assessment, wherein you compare your uh, processes against a library of potential threats and vulnerabilities. So there is a big library of uh, potential losses and uh, risks that are bound to occur. So you compare your operations with respect to that library to see to what extent you are adhering to that uh, list and in what areas uh, your operations are deviating from that list. 
we also talk about risk control self assessment rcsa talking about the inherent risk that is uh, the, the risk that is already available in the product how good is your control mechanism and the residual risk the risk that is present even after the implementation of the control so the risk which is already existing and talking about uh, what is the framework you are going to implement based on the effectiveness of the framework still what is the amount of risk that is not addressed or that is still present as a part of the system which is the residual risk and we can even create a framework or scorecard based on the residual risk which is uh, give some kind of weights to residual risk and come out with a mechanism to translate the rcsa into a numbers so that uh, comparable relative ranking can very well be given to the various uh, organizations and processes within the organization then we are talking about uh, a tool called business process mapping identify all the key business processes right right from uh, lending or borrowing or uh, customer uh, uh, handling or uh, handling uh, priority customers normal customers deposits loans all these various uh, business processes identify the various steps in the business processes activities and from there associate what are the various uh, items that are relating to operations risk in each one of them so this helps us in clearly identifying individual risks what all could uh, occur what is the kind of interdependencies uh, in the risks where which can be uh, obtained through a risk matrix kind of scenario and uh, in which areas is the risk management framework within the organization slightly weaker and what are the areas of improvement for the risk management in the organization then we can use risk and performance indicators wherein identify the main risk drivers all key risks and what are the drivers to each of these key risks similarly from a performance uh, standpoint identify where all the processes have failed which will give an indication of the weakness failures and the potential losses all these can be taken to understand the risk management framework within the organization then we are talking about a scenario analysis actually uh, this is uh, an expert opinion you collect the expert opinion of various line and risk managers to identify what according to them are the potential operation risk events and what is their potential outcome and because this is more and more subjective in nature the it requires a proper robust risk governance framework so that uh, the integrity and the consistency of the process is established within the organization and we also talk about the quantifying the exposure to the operations risk so we can uh, use those outputs as a part of uh, the, let's say the economic uh, capital determination process uh, and uh, based on that and also can be used for assessing and controlling the operations so there could be a quantitative aspect involved in it and uh, sometimes we can even get into a comparative analysis by clubbing the various uh, of the about tools probably uh, comparing let's say uh the scenario results of scenario analysis with uh, probably uh, the internal loss data or external loss data so like that some kind of uh, comparisons and these kind of things can very well be done to make sure that the risk management is implemented properly within the organization so when we talk about uh, effective control there should be clearly established authorities and processes who is responsible for what who is responsible for monitoring what is the process uh, for uh, approving a new product or a new process or something like that 
and there should be a close monitoring of uh, adherence to the threshold limits not only setting them monitoring them is also an important aspect and there should be clear cut uh, procedures as a part of uh, the monitoring of those processes and uh, how do, how are the banks assets records looked at or who is uh, responsible for using them who is responsible for what records of the bank all these things have to be clearly uh, identified and highlighted then we talk about uh, the ongoing processes to identify the business lines or products so who will be uh, responsible for identifying the new business lines products and what is the level of uh, training and staffing at each of the levels that is required verification and reconciliation of transactions how is it uh, happening all these things are very much essential to ensure that uh, the bank or uh, the organization is following an effective control environment and now as an extension to this there are two key risks which are a part of the operations risk that are uh, becoming increasingly important in the current days so having appropriate uh, processes uh, for identifying and managing them uh, becomes the need of the hour so that's where uh, the focus on managing technology risk and managing outsourcing risk are more and more uh, important uh, from a company or a bank's perspective so looking at uh, the technology risk from a bank standpoint it it, it has to ensure that whatever the technology including the outsourcing arrangement to whom it has outsourced what it has outsourced for what technology it has outsourced it is aligned with the bank's business objectives whatever the technology the bank is using whatever the softwares the bank is using it is in line with the bank's objectives so uh, identification of and assessment of the risk there should be ample policies and procedures in place to identify and assess the technology risk and from a technology usage standpoint also the bank has to define the risk appetite as well as come out with a tolerance statement and also come out with mechanisms in terms of what procedures will be followed towards uh, mitigating the risk controlling the risk as well as managing the risk and effective control environment should come even with respect to the technology risk and whatever are the usage of risk transfer strategies like uh, insurance or uh, uh, derivatives or any such thing have to be clearly uh, identified and uh, the processes monitor have to be monitored so that they comply with the policy thresholds and limits and the management's responsibility is to ensure that the bank has a sound technology infrastructure which are in line with the long term requirements of the bank and uh, it should uh, it should be consistent in terms of providing sufficient capacity at normal activities and also even at peak level activities it should be it should not uh, break down so ample testing needs to be done for the usage of the technology by the bank so that this kind of uh, uh, this kind of issues don't crop up in the future and when it comes to outsourcing because nowadays we see a lot of activities of the bank are outsourced to some other uh, uh, outsourcing uh, entities so uh, and uh, and with uh, within almost all business processes we see some form of outsourcing or the other is occurring so from a government's uh, perspective there should be a lookout for the procedures which will identify which activities will be outsourced how the activities will be outsourced and also how the due diligence is performed in selection of outsourcing service provider is it uh, assigned on an ad hoc basis or is there a stringent process in terms of identifying the outsourcing service provider 
what is the procedure for identifying the outsourcing service provider and even the arrangement the outsourcing agreement has to be properly structured talking about who will own what who will have the ip rights on what what is the, the what is the associated with the confidentiality of the data and in what cases a termination of the outsourcing agreement can happen by each of the parties and what are the things which the bank is performing internally to manage and monitor the risks and uh, even assessment can uh, constant financial assessment of the outsourcing service provider need to be done so which means an establishment of effective control environment from the bank's perspective needs to be done for the service provider and if at all the outsourcing service is failing or did not take off the way it is intended to or expected to be what are the viable contingency plans that are available and uh, what kind of service level arrangements or agreements can be uh, defined with the outsourcing service provider clearly identifying the allocations and the responsibilities of the service provider and the responsibilities uh, of the bank all these things will ensure that the operational risk management is properly implemented within an organization and uh, contributes to the sound risk management uh, within the organization if you have any further queries uh, regarding this uh, session you can uh, get back to me by giving me a call on the number provided below or you can send in an email at vamsi@pacegurus.com Thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.